ask that you uh, bless the leaders here of our community and uh, grant us the uh, wisdom and the knowledge and the ability to carry out uh, our duties uh, and employ that you would see fit. We also ask you to continue blessing the cities, uh, the citizens of our city of Manal State and the surrounding area. It's in your son's name we pray all these things. Now, now Robert will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now to the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and then do this one. Thank you. You may be seated. Jennifer, do we have any citizen comments? No, ma'am. Thank you very much. The first item on uh, number five, which is our first full item on the agenda, is a public hearing. And it is regarding a request by the owner agent to plant lot one, block one of SL McKinney's amended division. Division and uh, subdivision number one in division number one of the OTP of Van Austin, Texas, as per plat of record in volume 183, page 351, BRGCT being 0.454 acres of land in the James McKinney Survey, abstract number 770, located at the northeast corner of North Preston Avenue and Taylor Street, which is just up this way about uh, a block and a little over a block. Are there any comments that anyone wishes to make regarding this? And you do not have to have filled out a form in a, in a public hearing. Oh, okay, I'll, I'm calling you first. Please stand and state your name. Joel Duncan, I own the property. And uh, what I'd like to state was if we could agree to the replant, I need for the addresses to be on North Preston and North Main. Okay. Thank you. Next. My name is Wayne Jeffers. <coughs> I am concerned about the uh, sewer system down through Preston. Uh, we have a lot of backing. Uh, that I'm sorry, that's, that's during the citizens' comments. I'm sorry? That's during the citizens' comments. We're, we're, we're talking about public hearing for the plant. Okay, but if they put homes there, that's going to increase the the uh, sewer system okay. problems right. that I'm, we have. I'm, I'm sorry. <coughs> but, and that is my concern. Um, my, the, I had trouble there. We've had uh, sewage leaking uh, along that that uh, main that goes down through there. Um, I've been told that uh, there's a couple of cracks and bad spots in that that. Uh, sewer line in there, uh, you're going to increase traffic, you've got kids there, um, and uh, it also um, <clears throat> needs, something needs to be done. I mean, uh, that's, you've got uh, businesses that are flowing into that old system, um, and a bunch of houses, and you add this on top of that, that's going to create a big mess. And uh, I'd like to that's my comment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's your comment of what might happen if the plant was approved. Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, are there any other comments at this time? Yes, ma'am. My name is Betty Ned. I really have a question. Betty. Want Ned, N E D. Okay. Um, are they wanting to okay, I guess do the redo the addresses for their own press and name, but is the purpose to put homes there? I mean that's I don't know what the what the purpose of what they're wanting to do. Is it to put homes on those lots? You mean if the plant is approved? Yes, ma'am. So Mr. Duncan, what's your intention, sir? Uh, duplexes, two uh, Two duplexes. Two duplexes. Two duplexes. And three homes for duplexes. So, after the plant is approved, you want to come back and have it rezoned? I don't have it done to be it, it has been rezoned. Yes, it was rezoned six years ago. Okay. <coughs> Are there any other comments? 
third and final call. Are there any com more comments regarding this? Then I declare this pub this part of the public hearing closed at 6.35. Item 6, conduct a public hearing regarding a request by the owner agent to refat lot 22 mm -hmm. of the Sanford Circle Northside edition of Grayson County, Texas, being 2.90 acres of land in the TJ Paxton Survey, abstract number 953, and the TENLC Survey, abstract number 1225, more commonly known as 13560, U.S. Highway 75. Are there any comments regarding this? Second call for comments regarding this. Third and final call. There being no comments regarding number six, I declare this public hearing closed at 636. The next item is an item from uh, Chief Barnes. Thank you, Mary. I'd like to introduce uh, two of our new uh, members to the police department. Uh, Chad Mercer and Alex Jones. Uh, they're gonna be great additions to the department. Ethically, morally, they're, they're sound individuals, uh, good people skills. Um, they're the first two officers to go through our new program as we're going through the recognition. So they were the first to take the assessment test that, uh, that we hadn't done before. So very proud to bring them to the community. I think the community is going to, uh, same respect they're going to have for them as, uh, that I do. As, uh, I think they're going to make good additions to the, to the department. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and welcome to our police department. And welcome to your families. I'm glad to see that your family is with you. This is very much a family oriented community. Thank you. The next item, approval of minutes from the April 14, 2015 regular city council meeting and the April 21st, 2015 work session meeting. Are there any corrections or discussion regarding either one of these minutes? Councilman Play? No, ma'am. We've got him down there by himself, so he would be good. <laughs> yeah. There being no comments or corrections, is there a motion that we approve these minutes? We have a motion from Larry Cooper. Is there a second? I have a second from Robert Jessica. All those in favor, please raise your hand. It is unanimous. Motion approved. Okay. Consider and take any action necessary regarding the 2013-2014 fiscal year audit presented by Susan LaFollette of LaFollette and Abbott, PLLC. Susan. annual financial report. The PowerPoint tonight is a summary of the bound financials that council has as well as the two letters. We'll be going over the objectives and scope of the audit, the financial report highlights, an overview of the results, our recommendations, required government governance communication letter, and then closing. The objectives were to conduct an audit in accordance with government auditing standards, which is also called a yellow book audit, and plan and perform the audit to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements are free of material mistake. It was a full scope audit, including the governmental activities, business type activities, the EDC and CDC, as well as each major fund. 
the bound financial report that council has in their possession has an independent auditor's report on pages one and two, management discussion and analysis, government-wide financial statements, the fund financial statements, the notes to the financial statements, required supplementary information, and the independent auditor's report on internal controls and compliance. First, we'll go over the financial highlights of the government-wide statements. They are prepared on a full accrual basis. They're on page eight and nine. And a full review of that would show that the assets exceeded the liabilities by $6,269,339, and that's called the net position. The net position is an indicator of whether the city's financial health is improving or deteriorating. Uh, this year, the net position did increase by $283,364. It's on page nine, or four and a half percent. The unrestricted net position was $1,465,930, as shown on page eight. And that did go up a little under $400,000 from last year. The fund financials are the financials that the city council is probably the most familiar with, but the general fund unassigned fund balances, as shown on page 10, were $582,226 at the end of this year. Last year was $468,000. That's basically showing that there was an increase of $114,000 to meet city, the city's ongoing obligations, and that's a positive note. This represents two months of reserves. Three to six months is the optimal, but it is up at least from last year. The general fund expenditures, as shown on page 12, were $3,475,807 for this year. Last year, $3,093,378. The increase in expenses is mostly the result of capital outlays for an ambulance and police vehicle this year. One thing to note on page 12, the general fund had an increase in fund balances of $531,997, and that seems like we really made some money and did fabulous, but there's a reason for that. The proceeds of the fire truck debt were received during 14, but the related capital outlay was not made until the next year, so that overstated the one year and the loss was swinging the net. So that's just something to note. The financial highlights of the water and sewer fund will go again to the unrestricted net position. It was it's $337,659 at the end of fiscal year 14. It was only $10,748 last year. So it had quite an increase of $326,911 that can be used to meet that fund's ongoing obligations. It's only two months of reserve still, and three to six months is optimal. But overall, on page 15, you'll see that the net position did increase by $42,652 for 1%. That means the fund is paying its own way. There were no transfers from the general fund or anything, so there was a slight increase. Probably need more given the infrastructure and things like that that are gonna to have to be built for the city. The financial highlights of the component unit will start with the EDC assets of a little over 500,000, slight liabilities of 23,000, which gave it a net position of $519,879. Revenues for the year were 116,276, mostly sales tax dollars. Expenses were 52,249, which gave an increase in the net position of $64,027. The CDC, which is also discreetly presented on page eight and nine, had assets of about a little over 200,000, liabilities of around 40,000, which gave a net position of $193,040. Total revenues for the year, again, mostly sales tax dollars, 112,675. Total expenses, 102,430, which gave a net increase of 
$245. The overview of the audit results, which is basically what we found. The first is our independent auditor's report on page one and two. It's an unmodified audit opinion, which is clean. There were no nothing there except standard verbiage. The report on page 42 and 43 is the independent auditor's report on internal control over financial reporting and on compliance and other matters based on an audit of financial statements performed in accordance with government audits, auditing standards, and we had no problems. Uh, we did become aware of several matters that could help strengthen internal controls and operating efficiencies, but they're not to be construed as negative or derogatory, but the following things are, there's four of them, and the first one just has to do with the, where you had the two months of reserves in the general fund, should be around three to six months, yeah. And the second comment is the same thing with the water fund. It's around two months. It should be optimal of three to six months. Also, there's a large amount of ambulance collections, a large amount of ambulance receivables, and we just think that you really need to take a close look at that collection process because every year those amounts keep going up. I think it was about 7% this year, but you might want to consider writing the receivables off of the financial statements but not necessarily at the collection level. You can still try to pursue them. Also, all of the cash reconciliations are done by hand and you've got 25 plus accounts. So I would just suggest that you consider buying the cash reconciliation module to go with your software. Save a lot of time. Uh, our required government's communication letter is one of the letters that you have. It's unbound. The qualitative aspects that we're supposed to talk to you about, there's some sensitive estimates and those really relate to the allowance for your uncollectible court fines and ambulance services. The significant disclosures are your long-term debt and those are in the footnotes. Difficulties encountered in the audit were none. There were some corrected and uncorrected misstatements, but management accepted all of those. So those, there's no disagreements with management. Closing, I'd like to thank Frank Baker, Jennifer Gruel, and Jennifer La Kanita, sorry, Kanita Larkins of the EDC. Everybody was helpful, responsive, and <coughs> So, questions or comments? <coughs> Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is consider and take any action necessary regarding authorizing the mayor to sign a resolution of support for application for the mayor. Sorry to interrupt, but we do need a motion on nine council to accept. Without that. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion from the council at this time to uh, adopt the, to approve the budget or adopt it? I mean, the our report. Approve. To approve the report. Oh, motion to approve the report. Second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Next. We will do consider and take any action necessary regarding authorizing the mayor to sign a resolution of support for application to the Texas Department of Transportation 2015 statewide transportation enhancement program to fund the Van Austin bike and pedestrian trail. Are there any questions or statements you wish to make regarding this council report? Yeah. Yeah. There being none, is there a motion at this time? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. It is unanimous. Number 11, consider and take any action necessary regarding nomination of Grayson County Small Cities Representative to the Red River Groundwater Conservation District Board of Directors. Do you have any comments on this? Uh, Mayor Council, 
uh, stated in your packet, spoke with Drew Satterwhite with GTUA. Um, current member is also the president that represents the small cities. He's from Pottsboro, and as soon as I get to the portion of the state, um, currently he is uh, he, he would like to run. Uh, he reconsidered for the uh, for the position. Um, we do not currently have any issues with him and are, are with his position or how he's represented in small cities. Uh, I believe Patterson is his last name. Yeah. And, uh, and so, um, unless somebody on council can think of someone that would represent Van Alstine in small cities, um, it's your recommendation as well. I would recommend that we follow uh, Drew Satterwhite's recommendation and move forward with Mr. Patterson being uh, supported by Van Alstine. Do you have any questions regarding this? No. <laughs> Uh, there being no questions, is there a motion at this time? I make a motion that we uh, approve a uh, uh, ballot for the uh, Mr. Patterson. Is there a second? All those in favor, please raise your hand. It is unanimous. Consider and provide staff direction regarding establishing a no truck zone on LA Button. Mayor Council, uh, We've had some issues with, especially, well, with the north end of Georgetown uh, being ready to start delivering lumber packages and uh, put more equipment for development. Um, we're asking that instead of just having the ability to enforce the uh, truck, truck route ordinance, we'd also like to have a no truck zone um, on Kelly Lane, from the north end of the new portion of Georgetown, going to Dallas. St. John's. Um, I'm sorry. St. John's. St. John's. There you go. Uh, so St. John's. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Uh, St. John's is, uh, is is the far north end of Georgetown. Um, we believe it's most appropriate for if any deliveries are going to be made into or out of Georgetown that they utilize the new concrete streets, they have the proper turning radiuses. As long as uh, as long as the residential parking appropriately within the subdivision, the trucks have the appropriate turning radiuses to be able to make it without going through people's lawns. The issue that we've been encountering is it had not been tremendous, but when it does happen, it has a, has a terrible effect, is the trucks that proceed down Kelly Lane uh, into town and either turn on to Houston or uh, turn on to Dallas, end up not, we don't have proper turning radiuses on the older streets, and so the trucks are ending up going through people's yards and tearing up their lawns. And, um, and so to prevent this from happening, we would like some direction on establishing a no truck zone on Kelly Lane again from Dallas to St. John's. Is that from Dallas to St. John's? Yes, sir. Rod Lynn? Yes. Sounds good, Chief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions regarding this? No. No. I was thinking of the, the, the south end of Kelly Green is, is uh, actually where I see that. There's County Line Road, and then just one of that, there's, there's a road for westbound traffic or a, um, a ramp for westbound traffic to get on to 75 but you can also turn before you get on the ramp on to 75 you can also turn right um, or north on the Kelly Lane and, and, and uh, I, I was thinking from what I read earlier um, that, that a sign there on, at the south end of Kelly Lane might be an appropriate place for a no job sign is that Am I thinking right? And if that's if that's council's druthers, then we can do that. The only issue that we're running gonna run into is if truck can and, and I know we've had several conversations about this. If trucks are going to make deliveries and they're coming from the Metroplex as as opposed to coming from our local one or north, um, 
if they have to, if we prevent a no truck zone for the full length of Kelly, um, and they're coming in to make deliveries, then they have to circumnavigate all the streets in Georgetown to be able to get to that north end. And so that that's that's where we ran into an issue, and that's why I was suggesting moving from the full length of Kelly to St. John's, so that way they can actually get in and make the delivery, but they can get back out. Um, because the main the main crux of the issue is, is right at Dallas and Houston on that one. And so for them, um, you're going to pull up the Google um, map. I, I can see, I'm trying to picture it, and I, I, I know you live over there, but I want to, if we need to, we pull up the map and, and identify exactly what I'm talking about. It means they can come in so far. So can you pull up the Google you know, map? Know about it, right up there. Yeah. Is that that in the way it's I'm assuming too that, that, that truckers know that they have a road to in, in the development section of Georgetown. They know the map permission to drive here. The trucks that are just that are just come off of 75 um, and, and, and are just trying to find a through way or a way through Van Austin back up to 121, 05, or 75. That's some of the traffic. However, if, if what you're suggesting is that, that, that truckers in that same situation, the guys that, that are just trying to find a way through Georgetown, if instead they could turn right on uh, this Parkway, is that what you're suggesting? Well, and then get back on five. And we want to keep and we want to keep people. Or we want to keep, we want to keep trucks off of uh, uh, Village Parkway. And what we could do is we could we could possibly put up a, a sign stating that the truck route established. And less making a delivery within. I mean, I lend lend you a suggestion here. At Kelly at the frontage road there, we could say truck zone ahead, and then you do the enforcement from St. John's northward because that's the only way those bigger trucks will be able to get into. From what he's getting at, how would we prevent them from turning on to Kelly unless they are making a delivery? Just well, you put a truck zone ahead and give them the warning. Okay. Right, right at that intersection. And that, that basically that says first warning okay. about how that happens. And then you put the enforcement signs just north of the same job. So then now I think that that's so sensible. Okay. So I, okay. We do want to keep them off. I understand. We, we had another conversation after that. And so it was like, okay, well, we'll get them out of there. But how they have like deliveries. So that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. Does that sound, is that within the realm of what's reasonable, Chief, in general? Mm -hmm. Sound all right? Chief, what are your thoughts? So my understanding is that if they're making a delivery into Georgetown with a packet, <coughs> they're allowed to do that only if they're going to a resident. But if they're, got, if they're, in, if they're bringing supplies in from Dallas or wherever it may be for the warehouse, mm -hmm. then they're going to have to take the alternate route of County Line Road. Yes, sir. Yeah, they'll have to remain on the county line or they'll have to stay on the fringe. That's, that's what we're trying to achieve. And of course, remind the council that whatever signage we do, we only have a fine number of officers and it's typically one within the city. So it's going to require the, the help of the citizens to, to notify us when this is being abused. And that way, if we have an officer available, we can go over there and enforce this. So it's, it's not going to stop, but it'll, it'll help. It'll help increase awareness. So, uh, Billy, do you have any questions? No, just a statement, and that is that there's going to be quite a bit of development down there, so I think this is a wise placement of that sign. Frank and I had talked about this earlier, and I was worried about the construction coming. I think that the sign too far to the front of the road, so I agree. Okay. Then at this time, is there, uh, it, since it states, consider and provide direction, this is, does not require a motion, is that correct? Um, well, I mean, we've got the direction, so Regina, we good? Or? Yeah, that's fine. You're going to come back with the ordinance that sets out the truck zone, right? Yep. So next, next meeting, we should have something for y'all to take action on. The next item, consider and take any action necessary regarding approval of a preliminary plan submitted by James Cooley for the Cooley Edition Phase 3 located near the southwest corner of Newport Drive and South Waco Street, which is also State Highway 5. 
you have any questions regarding this council member? We like? do have a larger print of um, the six books. Right now, the, the, the half the creek 
But he's going to change this, so all of that's going to be a responsibility. Thank you, Melanie. No, he's just changing it to so that the ranchers are right at the property line. So he's going to have the north half of the bridge, and the city is still at the south So he has some responsibility. Yes. <laughs> That's what she's saying. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I gotcha. All right. Thank you. Yeah. You'll have to determine if there's going to be concrete or retaining wall or whatever as far as maintaining the creek, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Are there any questions, any more questions regarding this council of life? If there is not, is there a motion at this time? I have a motion and a second, all motions in favor. Unanimous. 14. <coughs> Consider and take any action necessary regarding the request, request by the owner agent of the community lot 1, block 4 on the SL McKinney, amended division of subdivision 1 in district number 1 of the OTP of Van Austin, Texas, as per plat of record in volume 183, page 351, RGCT being 0.454 acres of land in the James McKinney survey. Abstract number 77, located at the northeast corner of North Tristan Avenue in Taylor Street. Councilman Ploy, do you have any questions regarding this? Uh, yeah, we're, uh, the gentleman brought up before about the sewer system and stuff like that in that area. We know we, we are aware of the uh, existing uh, sewer issues on that. Uh, Steve is currently looking into corrective actions on that. These two lots will not overburden the existing line at this point and then once we have repairs you know, so are, are, you, are we presently having problems there yes okay so and, but there, there's a collapse line and not going on Shreveport but we also have a collapse line up on Preston right now that we're looking to get ident identify the location to take care of. is this something that we should hold off until we get a plan in place that's to uh, okay. fix the sewer problem before we let the man go ahead with again, adding is, more problems to it. Okay. Again, this is a, a replant, so yeah. if you, you can only act upon the technicalities of the plant itself, the property. Okay. It meets all your requirements. So the plant itself is okay. We, we can work on the infrastructure issues as an ongoing process, but technically, remember the discussion about you have 30 days to act on the plan. Yeah. This is his first step. He's not He's not constructing any structures right now. He told you what his intention is, yeah. but he isn't bringing the duplex plans or anything like that to us. Okay, so that current- At that point in time, then we would have an opportunity to discuss the sewer plan again? Well, we would discuss the sewer plan, but we would be further along in correcting the actions, okay. the issues. So okay. I understand your concern, sir, but the plan itself doesn't allow him to just go and start building homes there. It, 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 moves, it moves him towards being able to do that, but he cannot do that yet. And we're working to try and get those sewer issues that you described, and we are aware of corrected. So we do have the capacity in it. Um, of course, the rains have increased that, and, and we, have had, we have had issues. There's, there's no denying it. Um, seems like we just had our 100 year or 500 year flood last Saturday and we could have it again. But we are working to, to get these things, these issues corrected. Um, we don't believe that, that two, new, two new duplexes, they will increase that burden, but they won't overburden that part of the system. We, we will work to get it fixed. I do, and that's regarding the zoning. The gentleman stated that duplexes could go on with the current zoning. I thought R1 was single family residence. 
in reason. This is you, right? Yeah. Since I gave it away, I would have no, no, it's just not. Oh, good. Yeah, Lynn, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was I was I was aware that it was R1. I, I did not know that. I have not seen the zoning case in the five or six weeks ago. We'd have to go back and look at the zoning to confirm what you're saying. Yes. Right. Just to sure we should have yeah. um, tonight. So we, we can't confirm that. Is R1 not included in the plot process? The plot process? No, no, that's still something I see as a separate. Okay. Whatever his, no, existing, whatever his existing zoning is, yeah. will be his zoning. The setbacks of R1 and two family are the same okay. in the in the Oakland mm -hmm. district. So okay. technically, the setbacks meet the requirements in either of those zones. Right? Okay, there being no other questions or discussion, is there a motion at this time? Is there a second? All those in favor, please raise your hand. It is unanimous. Okay, we consider and take action necessary regarding our request by the owner agent to replant lots one and two of the Sanford Circle North Side Edition of Grayson County Tennessee in 2.90 acres of land in the TJ Paxton Survey Abstract Number 953 of the TENLC Survey Abstract Number 1225, more commonly known and 13560 U.S. Highway 75. Are there any questions regarding this, Councilman Cooper? I just, I just want to I thought I had to put this in the TNC meeting, but uh, this, this lot 1R, that used to be two lots, and now it's being uh, yeah. in the motion. Would you want like a bigger sheet? Are you all no, good? I'll be good. Okay. Councilman Clegg? No. The, pur the purpose of this. No. I'm sorry. The purpose of this replay is to remove a lot line between lots one and two of this edition and make it one big lot. So that they, uh, I assume put a building somewhere across that path. Thank you. Uh, since there are no further questions, may I have a motion? I made a motion to accept this feedback. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. It is unanimous. Number 16, we have department reports. Jennifer, do you have anything you would like to uh, state at this time? Um, just a, a reminder that City Hall will be closed on Monday, May 25th, um, in observance of Memorial Day. Thank you. Uh, Chief. We do have one siren that's not functioning correctly, uh, so it's up at Agbury working on getting that resolved. So. Uh, we do test them every month, like, and it worked fine. I think possibility got hit Saturday allotment, so uh, working diligently on that. And just you know, it looks like we're gonna get seven more days of rain, so I would my suggestion would be if you know anybody that wants to try to drive in it, tell them to stay home. Because Saturday we had a lot of issues with people wanting to get out and not listening to that it's flooding. And that's why we had the sirens going off this afternoon. We were retesting it. Uh, to try to determine whether they were working or the one that was broke working uh, because Encore had to come out. What happened is the lightning either hit it or hit near it. It blew the fuse off of the uh, from the electrical company. So they repaired it late yesterday and that's why we, we tested it today to see if that fixed the problem and they're doing it again. So, Thank you. Does the fire department have anything to add? Our will count continue to increase to 3,000 people at the end of the busy month in May will also be closed in the service month of November. Thank you. Frank, do you have a report? Uh, Mayor Council, we, uh, we had an extraordinary Saturday and Sunday. Uh, um, public works, police, fire, uh, all did.
did an outstanding job of uh, responding to the issues in town. Uh, dispatchers taxed. Um, we called in additional resources for later in the day on Saturday, and thankfully they weren't needed. Um, the waters receded fairly quickly in most parts of town, um, so drainage did work to some extent. Uh, we did have to go out and assist up on 75. Um, and we even had one person that stated that she was displaced by the water and we set up the emergency shelter. Um, library director uh, Kimsey came in and, and, and staffed so we could uh, go out and respond to issues and, and blocking off roadways that we did not need people driving through to create a larger issue. Um, Jennifer wanted me to make sure that recognized that she was available and ready to come in too and help out with paperwork. Um, should, it, should, it, should it have become a larger event? So they want to not, not recognize it just for ready, willing, and able to help us out. Um, because everything that we do has to be tracked. And, um, but uh, Chief Barnes, Chief Smith, uh, Public Works Director White did an outstanding job, and I'm sure do appreciate them uh, being willing to respond and take care of business. Thank you. Councilman Floyd, do you have any pleasant comments? Um, I just want to plug the Keith and Austin uniform. We've been doing a lot of work getting the city cleaned up. A lot of that stuff got kind of washed out. <laughs> and trash got regathered in certain places. So we're planning some more uh, cleanup things. So we want everybody to get out and help some more. So it's a lot of work.